Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm still looking at the Nick Collection 6. Today I'm looking at ColorFX with its new HSL sliders, new control lines, as well as updated control points. I'll give you some tips and tricks as well. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me again today. Today I want to look at color effects. I want to look at the new control lines, the updated control points, and the HSL sliders, which is a big improvement to color effects. So we're going to get a look at that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and launch this image. I'll do some editing on it, show you some of these new features, as well as some tips. So let me go ahead and launch color effects. I'm just using the Nick Collection 6 palette. I'm just going to click on color effects. We'll launch color effects. I showed this in my last tutorial, but this is a really nice feature to turn your image into a smart object. You can do it right inside of any of the Nick filters. And all you need to do is come down here to the bottom right hand side and check on convert to smart object. And then this, this warning comes up saying, you know, select the option to convert layer to smart object and the plugin will function as a smart filter. The brush will be deactivated. Click OK. If you don't want to see that again, just check this off. Do not show again. I'm just going to click OK. But now when it goes back into Photoshop, it will be a smart object. So I could always come back in here and readjust things if I wasn't happy with my adjustments, which is pretty nice. Let's start off with the HSL sliders. Now this is brand new in color effects and I really like this and this was much needed here. So for instance, I could come here and if you click on this white square, this is the overall hue and saturation. So I could go ahead and add some more saturation to the entire image like so. We can alter the hue if we need to, but then we could break it down into the different color hues. I'll start by adjusting the blues in the sky, so I'll click on the blue block. But notice something, this is very helpful. Saturation and luminance have that blue hue representing the blue block. Now let me go ahead and click on magenta. You can see these are magenta down in here. So that's kind of nice, it helps you to realize, hey, I am working with blue here. But we have hue, we have saturation, luminance and uniformity uniformity is really nice if you want to keep your colors more uniform you just slide this slider to the right so watch i'll move this to the left and watch the sky up there see how the sky changes a little bit it becomes less uniform now if i start to drag it to the right it'll take on a more uniform look as i drag it the whole way over to 100 percent but in this case i may take it back to right about here but let's say we want to add a little bit more saturation in that blue maybe something like that, and then maybe lighten it up a little bit with a luminance slider, so that's pretty cool. And then we could come here and let's work with magenta. I'll click on magenta. And now with the magenta, let's give it a little bit more saturation. Okay, something like that. And of course we can maybe lighten it up a little bit, maybe something like that. I think the uniformity looks good. And now I think there's some purple back in here, so let's click on the purple block. And again, notice how the uh, sliders have that purple hue to them. So that's kind of nice so you can tell what you're working with. So let's go ahead and give that purple a little bit more saturation. You see that? Okay, and maybe just lighten it up just a touch, something like that. And I think the uniformity looks pretty good, but let me slide it to the right a little bit, make it a little bit more uniform, somewhere right around there. Now, as far as the greens in here, you're going to find those mainly in the yellow. So let's click on the yellow. So notice when I take the saturation, take the whole way off. You can see there's a lot of yellow in that tree. So I'm just going to double click this. You can double click any one of these sliders right on the adjustment point to reset it. And now let's change the hue of that tree. Let's favor green a little bit more. So let me move this to the actual. I was moving it to the left. Let's move it to the right. Let's make it a little more to the green side. Now that's probably too much. Let me back it off. By the way, if you hover over these sliders, you can use your left and right arrow keys to like fine tune this. Okay, so there's 21%. I'm just using my left arrow key. I'm just gonna back it off till it looks about natural. And I'm thinking maybe right about here at 11. And I believe that would be 11 degrees. Now, let's see a before and after. Now, we could click right here on HSL. Here's the before, and here is the after. If you want to see an overall before and after, come up here to compare. 
you can left click and hold down there's your before release your left click and here's your after so once you start adding a bunch of different filters here from color effects you can see the overall change here but you could check off each one of the filters you're using with these little checks and don't forget about clear view it was added on the last major update i believe in nick collection 5 and it's kind of like a dehazing filter but it'll help you to add some punch and pop to your image remove haze and so on it's really cool too so i just wanted to mention that hey by the way if you want to purchase any dxo products including the nick collection 6 just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you right to the next store where you can purchase these products, get free trials, whatever. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way on a regular basis. And when you use that affiliate link, I really appreciate it and thank you for it. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this. You'll notice anytime you make an adjustment on any one of these shoes, you see a little white dot letting you know that you made that adjustment. So that'll help keep you straight as to what you've adjusted or what you haven't adjusted. A small feature, but a very important one. Hey, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this new Nick Collection 6 and some of these new features. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on it. Hey, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Before I move on, I feel I'm a little bit oversaturated on the entire image. And right now you can see I'm working with yellow because you can see under saturation and luminance, you can see the yellow hue right here. So I like that. But let's click on the white block. And I'm just going to pull back on the saturation a little bit. Right now I'm at 33%. And I think I'm going to come down to, I don't know, about 24%. Here is the before and here's the after. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. And now let's look at control lines and control points. Now, on my last tutorial, I was showing you Vivesa and I showed you control lines. But we also have control lines right inside of Nick Color Effects. And I'll start with control lines first. And then I'll show you a new update that they've added to control points. What I think I want to do to this image is add a little bit of glamour glow to the entire image. But I want to add it differently in different parts of the image. And I will use control lines and control points to show you how to do that. And that'll show you what's new as well as give you a few little tips in here of how to use control lines and control points. Now there is 55 filters inside of color effects, but right now you're only seeing my favorites because I have the favorites stalled on here. And Glamour Glow is one of my favorites, so I'm going to go ahead and add that. Now if I click right here, you can see the different presets. I'll use this preset, Strong Glow. It's going to be very strong, but it's going to be able to help me to show you how these control lines and control points work with these new updates, as well as give you some tips. I'll start out with control lines. We have two different types of control lines. We have a regular control line and we have a neutral control line. Now I'm going to click on neutral control line and I'm just going to drag up from the bottom here to somewhere right about this area right here. Now the only difference between a neutral control line and a regular control line is this opacity slider. For a regular control line, the opacity sliders turn the whole way to the right full on. A neutral control line is a control line at 0% opacity. In other words, it's shut off. It's really just that simple. Now here's a little tip for you. Left click and hold right here. And then on a Mac, hold your command key down. On a PC, hold your control key down and start to drag a little bit. And you can see the actual mask. And that helps you to set where you want your control line to go to. But notice something you notice the light areas. Those are the areas that are going to be getting the effect. But what if I wanted this whole graduated linear gradient area to get the same amount of effect? Well, here comes another tip for you. Come over to the right side of the interface. You see where it says control line and click right here. You'll actually see the mask. By the way, you can double click control line and give this a name and let's call this foreground. Very nice for keeping yourself organized. I really like this feature. Now let's fine tune this mask. I want to show you how to turn any control line into an actual, just like a linear gradient where everything gets affected the same and it will graduate off at the edge. Now you'll notice I have luminance, opacity, and chrominance. And you can also get those adjustments over here, opacity, luminance, and chrominance. And you can toggle this on and off if you don't like it here by clicking this button right here. And now you won't see it and you'll make your adjustment over here. 
but I'm going to toggle that back on. But what I want you to notice here, if you take luminance and drag it the whole way to the left, and then come to chrominance and drag it the whole way to the left, I now have created a linear gradient. Pretty cool. And now let's get out of the mass mode by clicking that same button right here. And now we can see our image. And we could take this and we could drag this up like so. And now you'll notice the glamour glow is only going up here. And I may just pull this down a little bit more to like right around here so it just graduates off. Now, this opacity slider right here, right now we're applying no glamour glow down here. But what if I just want to add some down here? So now I can take this opacity slider and start to drag it to the right. When I take it the whole way to the right, see I've added all that glamour glow back. And this is really nice and very powerful. That means I can adjust the bottom portion of this image in the foreground differently than I adjust the sky with control lines. So that is really a nice feature here. Now I could take this opacity and start to pull it back and just add the amount of the effect I want in this area. Say like maybe right there. Now I'm going to make another control line for the sky and affect it differently than I affect the foreground. Now I can either use add control line or neutral control line. Let's use add control line this time. So let's click on here and I'm just going to click and drag this down to somewhere right about here. And again, I'm going to click right here, hold my command or control key down and just move this a little bit. And you can see I have that sky selected really well right there. Now let's adjust this mask. So let's come back over here under control line. This time I'm going to double click and call this one sky and let's click on this mask button. And now we can see the mask. Now don't forget we have this little eyedropper tool. So we can click this and drag it and try to get a better selection. And I think right around there covers the sky pretty well. Everything's pretty light up in here and I think that is good. And don't forget we can also adjust our luminance. Okay. And our chrominance to really fine tune that. And then I'll be adjusting this opacity slider bit. Whatever I affect in the sky will not affect this tree or the foreground. So let's go ahead and click the mask button again. And now I have way too much glamour glow up there. So I'll just simply take this opacity and start to pull it back. I'll take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly to maybe right about there looks really good. To see the before after the sky, come over here to sky and just uncheck it. There's the before, check it back on, there's the after. Now here's the foreground, uncheck this, there's the before and here's the after. And if you left click and hold up here and compare, you can see the overall before and after. Now let's deal with the tree and I'm going to deal with that with a control point and I'll show you a new feature in the control point. Now we can either use a regular control point or a neutral control point because remember the only difference between a neutral control point is neutral has the opacity the whole way set to 0% where an add control point has the opacity set to 100%. So it doesn't really matter because we can always adjust the opacity. So let's use a add control point and I'm just going to click right here on this tree. And of course, we can go ahead and make this size larger. So let's make it a larger size like this. And remember, you can click on the control point as you're holding that click down, command or control, click and hold. And then you can move a little bit and see the mask. And then you can adjust it too to where it's getting everything. And right about there looks pretty good. And then we can fine tune it here with luminance. So Let's go to the mask mode. But before I do that, let me double click control point and call this tree. And then I'll click on this mask button or icon so we can actually see that mask. And now let's adjust luminance. So we can adjust it to the right or to the left. In this case, I'm going to go to the left to somewhere right about here. And now we can go with chrominance and see which way we need to go. I think to the left is really good. Now here is a new feature and that's called diffusion. Right now, notice what happens when I start to drag this into the left. It will start to tighten everything up. See how everything is getting tightened up to stay right within that circle there, right? So we can adjust this to where, and I'm looking at the mask to where everything looks kind of even and everything's getting a nice adjustment and in this case i think i would move it maybe right to about here it tightens up the tree i don't care about this little area here out here it's not going to get affected that much 
Okay, and now let's shut off the mask view by clicking this icon again. And now we can take this opacity, and that's only going to deal with our tree now. Okay, so I can take this and drag this into the left, take it the whole way off, and now I have no glamour glow in the tree, and now I can just maybe add just a touch of glamour glow like that. Now we can always come back here to the mask mode, so let's click on the mask mode button. and. I can even make this circle smaller so I can come here and let's move it into the left. See, and I can drop out more of that stuff on the outer edge to somewhere right around in there. So it's a matter of working with the fusion and the size of the circle to get the right adjustment. And now let's click on this button again to see the image. Okay, so now I'm going to toggle off the tree. So here's before. You can see all that glamour glow in here is after. So now I have effectively adjusted the foreground, the tree, and the sky all separately using control lines and a control point. And now I can still come up to the glamour glow sliders and say maybe pull back on the glow a little bit just to ease off in the entire glow. And uh, we could work with saturation or maybe I want to just maybe warm it up just a touch like that. Now here's my overall before and here is my after. Well, there you go everyone. That's color effects with the new HSL sliders, new control lines, updated control points. I gave you some tips today. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!